Hey, what's up, goats? It's Tito with uh, Screaming Gunk CNC. And I just want to show you what you could do with a quarter inch bit. Either you, your machine came with one or you had to go purchase one. My machine, the Altmel, the 4x4, did not come with any bits. The YouTube algorithms constantly kept bringing me to the IDC Woodcraft channel, which led me to, to eventually purchase. So this one is a one quarter inch down cut end mill from IDC Woodcraft. Make sure we can see that. Hopefully that picks up. But I just wanted to showcase what, if this was the only bit that you have, what can you do with it? So I spent my own money, my own time sitting in my shed, just bored and just want to see if all fails and this is the only bit I have can I still create a project yeah so this is a 24 tall 48 wide piece I've had and I just wanted to show you what you could do if you just had a one quarter inch so this is this text here I wanted like a spooky kind of Halloween vibe to go with the sign that I was making but the ease didn't come out this is 1.75 tall, all right? But because I couldn't remember exactly the size, as you can see in my, I didn't save it. So I have no idea what it was, but it cut out. It did cut out nice, except for the ease. So maybe two inch, 2.25, I don't know. But for certain, for the aerial black, over here, this pangram, this is 1.75, and you can see that the E's do not cut through all the way. Same with the A's. But the O's, or the centers of the B's, O's, and the D and the G and aerial black, pretty good stuff. Just to ease in and work out in the 1.75. But in two inches, the E's and the A's look awesome. In the two and a quarter inches, the E's and the A look pretty awesome. So I would highly feel confident that if you're running a project with a uh, two inch, you'll be good to go. And here is a 1.75 inch outline with the quarter inch end mill. And the G quite didn't go through. But if you come here with the two inch, the G went through just fine, and that looks good. Also here, let me move my mouse. With the quarter inch end mill, I was able to surface. This is a 0 .01 surface. I didn't go crazy. I just wanted to make as much different examples in one board. But look at that. You don't see the lines. But you definitely have to make sure your table is flat. All right? And what I mean by that is make sure you surface your tabletop. Here's a pocket long at 0 0.05. Here's a pocket, square pocket, a one inch circle, and here's a one inch circle outline. All that with a one quarter inch end mill. And then I moved over to this pumpkin. This is all done with a quarter inch end mill. Roughed out with that bit. As you can see, it's still in the, the collet there, in the spindle. I did hit it with some 220 sandpaper. This other stuff was not hit with sandpaper. So you can still see like the fuzzies. But 220, definitely cleaned this up really nice. This is MDF, by the way, guys. And I did the whole profile with that bit. So that's what it looks like. Oh, the lighting in here is horrible. So hit it with the sandpaper. It looks good. And it looks really good. So if I were to add, and this is a quick test sanding, nothing crazy. Like I still got the tabs on there. Nothing crazy, but look how good it cleaned up. Really good. You can see when it cut up, when it cut it out, like nice and clean. You can see that. Nice and clean. So that's what you can accomplish with a quarter inch end mill. Goats, I hope that helps clear any 
thoughts or fears you have with text, the text height and font when using a quarter inch. I don't know if this is the only bit you have. It's, it looks like going through the YouTube's different channels, like when it comes to engraving, a lot of people like to use the V bit. But for what I understand, looking at different products, CNC products, that some machines come with the one quarter inch end mill. So if this is the bit that you have, like not if you wanted to make a project right away, you could do surfacing, but you could do some awesome pockets. You could do some profiling. You could cut out and it could make some cool designs. But like this pumpkin tray, this thing is, I don't know, 13 inches tall. It's a pretty significant size. It's a pretty good size tray made out of MDF. And of course, you can hit this up, paint it, make it look beautiful. But this is just so you can have an idea of like what you could do with the one quarter inch without spending hundreds of dollars in all these different bits when you could get some awesome results. All right. So I hope this helps. I hope this takes any confusion out or wondering or what size font or I'm sorry, what size you should go in the font. I would say at least start off with two inch and work your way up there. For anything smaller, you're going to lose a lot of detail. I haven't tried all capitals yet small in a smaller size for the pangram but this gives you an idea because not everything is going to be capitalized so i don't know right now i'm confident to say two inch would probably be my sweet spot if you have a different size for those of you experts out there or some of you journeymen that's been at this for a long time if you have any recommendations if you have any like perfect sweet spot in size or certain fonts when it comes to lettering and engraving, let us know. We're in this community together. We're all learning together, right? So get your CNC, get your bits, and have fun making some CSC projects. All right, goats. Talk soon. Peace.